Welcome to today's event. A reminder to media on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. You will be limited to one question and one follow-up. With that, I will hand it over to Minister Farnworth. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Farnworth, the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General for the province of British Columbia. And I'm honoured to be here on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen-speaking people and the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. Joining me today are Roly Russell, Parliamentary Secretary for Rural Development, and Jennifer Rice, Parliamentary Secretary for Emergency Preparedness. They are the Provincial Recovery Liaisons, liaisons who have been working with the Village of Lytton, and I want to thank them for joining me here today. I'd like to start by acknowledging how incredibly difficult it's been for the people of Lytton to see their homes and community burned to the ground and to have their lives uprooted. And all this while there's so much other uncertainty happening in the world. It requires strength and resilience. And so today I'd like to also thank the leadership and residents of Lytton for having those qualities in spades, for having a strong and inspiring sense of community. Now that the weather has warmed up in Lytton and following the fall flooding, the roads are clear and we are at the point where we can start to rebuild and accelerate the work of rebuilding. Today, we are announcing an additional $18.4 million in new provincial funding to support the rebuilding of Lytton. This will cover the substantial costs of debris removal, archaeological work and soil remediation for all the uninsured and underinsured properties in the village. The debris removal work will start with the municipal property sites tomorrow and expand to residential properties once that work is complete. We are taking action to speed up the progress and support the community through the very challenging task of rebuilding ahead. This recovery is a partnership and the province continues to have the backs of the people of Lytton. To make sure this work moves forward and takes place as quickly and as smoothly as possible, we are removing some of the cost obstacles for both the village and residents. And we're working closely with insurance providers, non-government organizations and the village to coordinate it all. First, we're financing the immediate removal of debris including ash, soot, metals, bricks and other building materials from more than 200 properties. Following this, the province is coordinating and funding the costs for the archaeological work. This is an area of significant cultural importance and we need to be careful and respectful. That said, we do not want the cost of archaeological work to be a barrier to the people of Lytton. This work will identify and preserve any findings in the area and will further our reconciliation and co collaborative resource management with the Entlakapam Nation. The last step to this important work is site remediation. Soil remediation will remove any contaminants from the ground and restore the landscape into a safe site for the village and residents to rebuild on. To help meet these milestones quickly, the province is also funding a work site with temporary housing for up to 30 staff consultants and construction workers who are going to be work doing a lot of this work on the ground. As well, we have dedicated an assistant deputy minister to work hand in hand with the village of Lytton in ensuring that things move as they are supposed to. Clearly, there's a lot of work ahead and we're backing the community to get this done and get it done right. The funding announced today will clear the way for the rebuilding of Lytton. In closing, I'd like to say that the province continues to be there for the community of Lytton and as partners in this recovery, we will continue our support. Thank you and I'll now pass it on to Parliamentary Secretary Russell. Thank you, Mr. Farnworth. I'm very pleased to be here today to celebrate this hopeful news for Lytton. It has certainly been a difficult road for everyone in the community and we know people are eager to rebuild and get home. Today's announcement will help mitigate future delays and will help everyone in the community move forward together faster through this recovery. As recovery liaisons for the province, Parliamentary Secretary Jennifer Rice and myself have visited Lytton and have been working closely with their Mayor and Council. We've also been attending regular town halls with the community, listening and bringing their feedback back to Minister Farnworth, Cabinet and Ministry staff. 
We have certainly heard from community and echoed by the mayor that there is a desire for more clarity around what the process will look like to get back to swinging hammers and rebuilding. So we want to assure the people of Lytton that we will be continuing to clarify and support that need. It's so important that governments at all levels work in partnership in times of great need or struggle. And so I'm grateful for Lytton's spirit and determination to build back their community. I hope that today's announcement will reassure the people of Lytton that despite challenges, the province is here to help the support the community wherever and whenever obstacles arise. And together we are making progress. We look forward to moving into this stage of recovery that will bring us closer to getting those shovels into the ground. Thank you. And I'll pass it over to Parliamentary Secretary Jennifer Rice. Thank you. I want to echo Parliamentary Secretary Russell's enthusiasm for this significant milestone. We know the community has been through a lot since last summer, including several setbacks along the way. We experienced a long, difficult wildfire season, followed by unprecedented fall flooding. Throughout these past months, it's been a privilege to work directly with the community and their leaders in our work as provincial recovery liaisons. The work and funding we're announcing today is a huge step in the right direction on the path to rebuilding Lytton. This will build on other supports the province has provided for Lytton's recovery. We recently provided $9.3 million in funding to support the village with its ongoing operations and recovery. 2.1 million of the funding is supporting the village through three years of core operations so they can focus on planning, recovery and rebuilding rather than on generating revenue. And we're directly funding several positions in Lytton's recovery team to provide the community with the personnel needed through the next steps. This includes a project manager who is overseeing key work streams on debris removal and water systems. This previous funding and getting Lytton the support they require on the ground has gotten to us where we are today. And I'm so proud to see that work, that work come together with this new announcement, which will greatly accelerate the recovery. We all want to get Lytton rebuilt as soon as possible. And with the work that starts tomorrow, we're on track to do just that. Thank you, and I'll now turn it back to Minister Farnworth. Accepting questions from the media now, I will remind the media to press star one to enter the queue. You will be limited to one question and one follow-up. Our first question today comes from Les Lane, Times Colonist. Oh, thanks. Uh, Minister, 250 days as uh, is continually raised in the legislature with uh, not much in the way of any sign of progress there. Is there, can you isolate a, a reason or a it seems like an excessive amount of time to get going, even if you discount the rainfall over the fall. I mean, you BC rebuilt two major highways over that period of time, and they can't seem to get anything started on this village in, uh, as I said, 250 days. What's the reason for that? There's been a significant amount of work done uh, in terms of the rebuilding. A lot of it has been work that needs to be done before the actual rebuilding can take place. So first off, the site was very much a toxic site, and so there has to be dealing with the toxic materials that were there. There had to be a lot of sifting done for that was done on a by a volunteer basis and organizations to try and recover what personal uh, artifacts remain to uh, for for for, uh, for for people. Uh, at the same time, working very closely with the village of Lytton in terms of the, their capacity to function uh, as a community, uh, we uh, put uh, staff resources to them, uh, brought in a, uh, uh, an acting or a new uh, um, administrative officer for the community, working to ensure that they're able to deal with their bylaws. And the reality is, in terms of the, uh, the weather event, it had a significant impact on the, uh, the timeline in terms of the debris removal. 
uh, because a lot of the debris removal has to go to specialized locations. Uh, at the same time, on the existing road that was available, uh, there are uh, significant load limits uh, on that particular highway route. Uh, so there have been many challenges on a community uh, that was completely uh, and totally uh, destroyed. Uh, that being said, we're now at a point where we are able to make significant progress in terms of the rebuilding uh, of, the, uh, of the community so that people can return to it. Les, do you have a follow-up? Some people are suggesting that, that, as you said, the community is completely and totally destroyed. It didn't have a lot of capacity to begin with as a small village, and the leadership was just as traumatized as everyone else was. Should there have been a more direct provincial control or, I don't know, administratorship or more direct guidance in all those countless decisions that have had to be made over the last several months? We've been working very closely with the, uh, the village of Lytton. Um, I know that the, uh, the, the in, in terms of when you said uh, administrative or trusteeship, um, there's not much of a precedence for that uh, uh, in this province or anywhere for that matter that I am aware of. Uh, the best way forward is to work with the community on the ground. That's why uh, my two colleagues, the parliamentary secretaries, were tasked with liaising, liaising with the community, which they have done. Um, part of the rebuilding process, of course, uh, must involve the residents uh, and how they would like to see their community rebuilt, uh, along with the, uh, the council uh, in terms of what is their direction and their future, that, uh, the future that they see for Lytton? All of those things are, are, are critical if this uh, rebuilding is to take place successfully. It's not a case for the province to come in and start dictating this is how, you, how your community is going to be rebuilt. Uh, what's critical is, is that uh, the local people are involved uh, and being able to deal and address with the concerns that we are dealing with today, such as, you know, how many... Um, um, buildings are, how many individuals there are insured, uh, how many are uninsured, uh, the relationship with the, the First Nations band uh, as well, uh, also involving uh, the, uh, the federal government. Uh, all of those things are, are, are critical components. So uh, the approach, uh, has it taken time? Yes, it has. Recovery nearly always does. Uh, but we're on the right track, and this announcement today is going to significantly um, um, allow that, that recovery to, to pick up at a very rapid pace. Our next question today comes from Mandy Wen, Fairchild Radio. Um, hi, Minister Fanworth. Um, I have a question regarding the Little Chinese History Museum, uh, which was also destroyed by the wildfire last year. So I'm wondering, is the province planning to rebuild the Little Chinese History Museum? Thank you. Uh, certainly, that's one of the important aspects of, Lit uh, of Lytton. Um, as I've said in my remarks, this is an important heritage site, uh, not just in terms of First Nations heritage, but also the broader community, and in particular, the, uh, the Chinese community. Uh, there was some significant work in trying to recover uh, artifacts from that site, uh, and obviously that's something we want to work with uh, going forward. Mandy, do you have a follow-up? Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the next question, we go to Joel Ballard, CBC. Yes, hello, Minister. Thanks for uh, taking my question. Um, I am wondering if you can give us um, a, a clearer timeline. I know in the short term, work starts tomorrow, but in the long term, what we're looking at, especially for people who have lost their homes and, and are waiting to find out when they will eventually be able to move back into their community. Well, this, uh, the debris removal is the critical, com the critical start of that process. So it's starting with the municipal uh, structures um, and then is being coordinated with the fully insured the, and the under and uninsured uh, residents in terms of the, that debris removal. And we would like to see that uh, take place as quickly as possible. Um, that being said, of course, that's one of the reasons why we're picking up the, co the cost of the archaeological work and coordinating that work. Uh, but we want to see this uh, uh, move as quickly as possible, and that's why the resources are in today's announcement to do just that. Joel, do you have a follow-up? Yes. Um, do you mind clarifying the amount that the province is providing now? I know you announced the $18.4 um, I'm just wondering if all the uh, other announcements you made around funding, uh, construction, work site, uh, living site—is that all included in the 18.4 million, or is there 
I'm more that's financially the, the, on top. That's in the uh, 18.4 million. Uh, at the same time, that's over and above the additional 9.3 that we have already announced, which was to assist the uh, the village of Lytton in terms of its recovery, uh, it, it, its its recovery as as an administ as an administrative unit, uh, but also with some of the other infrastructure that's there. Our final question for today comes from Shannon Waters, BC Today. Hi, I actually have a question on another issue for the minister. Back in 2019, when um, British Columbians were still learning in bits and pieces sort of what had gone on in terms of alleged misspending and misappropriation of public funds at the BC legislature by the former clerk whose trial has just wrapped up, um, you said that you were looking at making changes to make the legislature subject to FOI, make things more transparent and make it easier for everyday British Columbians and journalists to get access to information about what's going on in the BC legislature. Whatever happened to that effort? Well, uh, we've actually done that uh, in terms of increased transparency and your ability to get information. And in fact, you're able to access more information now than ever before. So, for example, all spending uh, in the clerk's office, all spending uh, in the speaker's office is now public information and you don't have to file an FOI request to get it. Shannon, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, have you spoken to the independent officers who were calling for very specific sort of amendments to be made to legislation? Now, some of those um, practices and procedures within the House have changed, but the calls from the independent officers remain the same, having spoken to some of them back in January. They'd still like you to make the changes that you promised to make back in 2019. Is that something you plan to do? There are still some changes that we would like to make, but we also need to make sure that that uh, that the changes don't impact the the standing uh, of the legislature. So currently, for example, the independent offices of the legislature are independent offices of the legislature, uh, and. We, if you were to make uh, any additional changes, it would be to make sure that that role stays, the, stays in that way, that it does not make them what would be known as independent officers of the Legislative Assembly, which would mean that the legislature would be subordinate, uh, and that's not how our system works. That being said, um, we're quite open to, uh, to making additional changes in terms of improving, improving uh, transparency, and we will continue to do that. Um, you know, uh, we have a lot of work as, as, as government, and that, and that work will uh, continue. Uh, but what we were particularly uh, um, clear on, and given the, what we saw back in 2019 with the, uh, the results that, uh, that came uh, in terms of what was happening in the clerk's office, for example, uh, we moved very quickly uh, to ensure that uh, there is full transparency in that area, and so that now you are able to access receipts um, and spending uh, in the clerk's office and in the speaker's office without having to access uh, freedom of information. Um, it, it is all online. And so, uh, uh, you know, I think that's what the public wanted to, wanted to know, uh, that, uh, that they could, you know, see, see those things, and, uh, and you can do just that. Thank you very much, everyone, for your participation. That concludes today's availability.